morning. My name is Ty Hodges, and I picked the Henderson case study to go over. Um, today, I'd like to go over the investment planning recommendations in the plan that was presented and give you some recommendations. Um, first off, Peter, you uh, asked me to kind of evaluate three stocks for you that you think you're undervalued, might be good values for your portfolio. Um, we've got the current dividend on those stocks, um, expected growth rate, and the current market rate. Um, as you can see, as I've illustrated for you, Stock F has a market value, current market value of $72. Uh, your required rate of return on these was 9%. Um, the stock has a $4 dividend, a growth rate of 3%. With our stock dividend, our growth rate, our required rate of return of 9%, the stock would be valued at $68.60. So with a fair market value today, current value of 72, 66, 68.66 does not match our our preferred position for the portfolio as it would be overvalued today um, and probably not a good addition. Um, stock G, the second stock we evaluated, has a market current market value of $73.50, um, $3 dividend, a 5% growth rate with our 9% required rate of return. As you can see, it has an expected market value of $78.75 ultimately matching our portfolio recommendation um, as an undervalued stock and would be a good recommendation to add to your portfolio for us. Um, stock H has a current market value of $95.25. With the same calculation, we see we have a $6 dividend, a 2% growth rate, our expected rate of return of 9%, which comes out to an $87.42, obviously under the current or over under the current market value. So ultimately this is an overvalued stock today and probably not a good add addition to our portfolio. Secondly, you have a zero coupon bond portfolio that we wanted to evaluate and see if we wanted to sell that portfolio or we have concerns about interest rates going up and you wanted to see if a 75 basis point increase in your, the interest rate, how would that affect your bond portfolio um, and if it was greater than 5% loss, then we should probably sell the portfolio and do something else with it. So, given those calculations, I figured out a quick calculation with our 10-year maturity along with a 75 basis point increase on a 5% yield to maturity. gave us a negative 7.14% return with the increase of the 75 basis points. Therefore, greater than our 5% that we were looking for in the portfolio, um, a little, probably a little bit more risk than we we're willing to take on. So we should obviously rebalance that portfolio to another position um, and probably balance it to the long-term time frame that you've illustrated in your plan, um, giving you more of a risk return profile of 8% and the standard deviation that goes along with that. Um, lastly, one of the investments we were looking at was the cabin rental home that your parents had gifted to you three years ago. Um, and a couple of things we wanted to address today was um, how many days that you could stay in the property and still call it a rental, the tax deductibility of the losses, and then selling for replacement value. Well, the uh, currently that property I saw was generating um, $8,000 in rental income, um, that would be taxed to you as ordinary income. Your average stay, um, assuming that we talked about, was an average of five days, um, give or take how many times that actually happens during the year. Um, to actually be able to stay in the home and keep it a rental, you would have to have it rented at least 15 days throughout the year. In actually stayed in the house for less than 14 days or 10% of the rental days. You would be able to deduct up to $25,000 in losses or expenses. Ultimately, there's also an AGI phase out for the deductibility of between $100,000 and $150,000.
Therefore, we would not be able to deduct the losses the VA would take on the rental income because our AGI is 170000 and we're out of the phase out. So therefore, it would probably be a good idea to sell the property. Um, what you would have to pay in taxes on the property, because the property was gifted to you, you would be able to take the carryover basis from your parents, Mike and Susie. Um, that, balance was, that basis was $50,000. If you were to sell it for the current market value at $150,000, that means you would have $100,000 of long-term capital gains, or $100,000 of profit that you would ultimately pay long-term capital gains on. Um, that would give us an opportunity to open up a little cash um, as well to fund other goals. Examples would be um, Donna and Frank's education, um, the business that Sarah would like to start, or we earmark dollars, dollars today for your retirement to help you alleviate some of the savings you would have to save every year.